to round out the basic second anniversary month, I thought I'd get a little personal again and take a look at some old favourites of mine who are in the news again at the minute. This week, it's the basics on those marine menaces, the Seacons. The Seacons are a team of Decepticons originally released in 1988 who transform into monstrous sea creatures. The team consists of Overbite, a shark always obsessively hunting for his next victim, Reconnaissance Operative Seawing, an eerie manta ray who delights in spreading fear and aims to ascend to Decepticon High Command. The repellent Scalor, a coelacanth who leaves a trail of grease and a horrible stench wherever he goes. Demolitions expert Tentakill, a cruel squid who lures his victims in for the kill by deceiving them with kindness. Seafloor salvage operative Nautilator, a hopelessly inept lobster who's woefully ill-suited to working underwater. And the team leader Snaptrap, a brutal commander whose tortoise mode's nearly invulnerable shell allows him to storm any battlefield with ruthless efficiency. The team combines to form Piranacon, a single-minded killing machine of incredible power. Snaptrap forms Piranacon's torso, while the smaller Seacons form his limbs, each able to become either an arm or a leg, all totally interchangeable, able to mix and match with the other combiner teams designed the same way. While these other combiner teams had only five members, the Seacons had six. Uniquely, each of the small Seacons could also transform into a weapon mode, and the sixth member becomes a gun for Piranacon. For this reason, the team were marketed as Target Masters. The Seacons were the last interchangeable combiner team released in the original toy line, and unlike their predecessors, they had no direct counterpart on the Autobot side. The Seacons were introduced into the Marvel comic book in stories exclusive to the UK edition of the series, summoned to Earth by Shockwave, where they defended the Decepticons' undersea base against an attack by Galvatron. Famously, the UK comic mistakenly referred to Overbite with his abandoned pre-production name, Jawbreaker. The team would later go on to appear in the American comic, fighting Blaster when he attempted to interfere with their recovery of a pair of Autobot data tapes from the seabed. The data on the tapes led to the ancient Cybertronian database, the Underbase, the cosmic power of which was then stolen by Starscream, who used it to offline the Seacons, killing the poor guys off only three issues after their US debut. Though they were released too late to feature in the original Transformers animated series, the Seacons did appear in 1988's Japanese exclusive sequel series, Super God Master Force, though their depiction in this series differed greatly from their characterization in Hasbro markets. Here, only Snaptrap, or Turtler as he was called in Japan, was a normal Transformer. The other Seacons were all animal-like drones. They couldn't speak, and they existed in vast numbers, serving as an endless legion of expandable foot soldiers that were frequently destroyed by the Autobots. None of the Seacons even transformed in the series, except into their combined form, known as King Poseidon in Japan. But they did get a cheerful image song on the Master Force soundtrack, sung by Turtler's voice actor Masato Hirano. King Poseidon would later return in 1990's Transformers Zone, one of nine demon generals gathered from throughout Decepticon history. Ten years after their original release, in 1998, the Seacon toys were recolored in white, green and gold and re-released as part of the Japanese series Beast Wars Second. This series reimagined them as a new group of characters distinct from the originals, the Space Pirate Seacons, a gang of rogues who roamed the spaceways in their flying galleon in search of riches. Nautilator's toy wasn't part of this version of the team, leaving only five members. Snaptrap was recolored to become Half Shell, a noble captain who genuinely cared for his loyal crew. Scalor became the elderly Seelagon, prone to dozing off. Overbite became Sea Phantom, always first into a fight. 
Sea Wing became Terror Mander, the easygoing junior member of the crew, and Tentacle was now the vain and short-tempered Scylla, the crew's only female member, named after the sea monster from Greek mythology. Together the team combined into God Neptune. As seen in the Beast Wars second animated series, the Seacons frequently clashed with Lyo Convoy's Maximals on post-apocalyptic Earth, after arriving on the planet to harvest its Angle Moi energy. Several episodes focused on a comedic love triangle involving Maximal Bison Bighorn's infatuation with Scylla, who loathed him and only had eyes for Bighorn's teammate, fellow squid Scuba. The Seacon toys were planned for another re-release in 2004's Transformers Energon toy line, with a new purple, orange, blue and black colour scheme, as new characters named the Piranacons, who combined into Piranha King, but the set was cancelled. Instead, it wound up being released four years later as an exclusive from the Transformers Collectors Club, with the characters now reimagined as the Seacons from the Marvel comic, who had taken on these new colours after being brought back online following their deaths at Starscream's hands. This release led to the Seacons appearing in several pieces of club-exclusive media, continuing the story of the Marvel Universe. First, while serving as moles for Megatron, the team brought down Bludgeon's renegade faction of Decepticons from within. Later, they were hurled through time to prehistoric Earth in a story that mashed up the original team and the Beast Wars space pirates into one. Nautilator and Tentacle were destroyed once more after their bodies were overloaded by Earth's excessive Energon radiation, prompting the surviving Seacons to adopt protective armour to avoid sharing their fate, changing their colours to match their Beast Wars counterparts in the process. They replaced their lost teammates with Scylla, who was created from a reprogrammed Autobot protoform, and who merged with them to create their new combined form, God Neptune. Sadly, outside the club, the Seacons haven't seen a lot of action in the 21st century. They've made a few fleeting appearances in assorted mobile games and comic books. Perhaps most notably, a version of the team appeared in the UK's Transformers Prime comic, in which they crash-landed on Earth, killing Snaptrap and leaving the incomplete Piranicon a mindless monster attacking human ships who had to be stopped by the Autobots. And while all the other classic combiner teams got brand new toys as part of the Prime Wars trilogy of toy lines between 2015 and 2018, for a while it looked like the best the Seacons were going to manage was a set of combining minifigures from the Creo building block line. Until just a few months ago when it was finally announced that updated modern Seacon toys are finally heading our way as part of the Transformers Generations Selects toy line. We've only seen a few prototypes so far, so it'll likely be a while before the whole team is released, but while we're waiting, let's hear that song again! C C C C C C C C C C C C C C C C C C C C And those are the basics on the Seacons. Let's hear your thoughts about them in the comments. They're my favourites because they were the only combiner team I completed when I was a kid. As always, if you enjoyed, hit like, hit subscribe, and if you can, I hope you'll consider supporting the series on Patreon.